Here we have a C blues, a bit of a funky groove, and it's similar to Albert Collins' Honey Hush, which is a, a hit he had, which is really a great tune. What I like about this one, it's got that funky groove, it's nice and tight, and uh, we're using the idea of a tritone on each of the chords, and I'll get into that in a second. So here's the riff. Basically just a C blues, 12 bar, C7, F7, and my five chord is G7, or G9, F, back to C. Now, the trick on this groove on this is this is what defines the tune, is the riff, right? So you really want to lock it in, and it's pretty much what you would play the whole time. The bass player plays the whole thing. At one point, I back it off a little bit and just play a little bit of the chord, but you really need to nail the groove. So, the riff. <laughs> If you get that, it's the same exact thing on the one, the four, and the five chords, just you have to change the string set. So the first two notes, I have an E flat and an A. I'm going to slide those up a half step. Now let's just talk about that. We're playing a C7 chord. C7 is spelled C, E, G, B flat. Now the two most important notes in this chord are going to be the E and the B flat. We call that a tritone. And without getting too deep into theory, the, the tritone, it just means they're three whole steps apart from each other. But those two notes are the key note to any dominant seventh chord. Key two notes, I should say. They make the sound of the dominant seventh chord. So if you're playing a blues uh, and you just want to play a little bit of the chord stuff, like I'm going to do in a second, I'm just playing the tritone, and that outlines the, the sound of the chord. All right, so I'm sliding into the, the tritone of the C7. Now my lick, a little tricky. Do you get it? Muting. So I have kind of like a ghost note. I'm playing this G. Like, but the really the, the, the note that's ringing out is a C, back down to the G, B flat, A, to the G again. So what I mean by this ghost note, I'll show you what I mean. If I just play the C, there's something kind of missing, so I play like a nice soft G, and that adds that really cool motion that we want, getting those dynamics in there. And you also notice I am accenting, accentuating some notes more than other ones, um, as opposed to going... That's not very cool, it's that... Right? So, so the really the notes I'm accentuating is going to be the C and the B flat. Now the beauty of the guitar, let's drop that towards the floor, and I've got my F7 covered. Tritone of F7 is A and E flat. If you just look at my F9 chord, right there, same exact riff. I should say, same as that fingering, just drop towards the floor. And back down to the one. Five chord. And you do those hits on the five chord. So right on here, um, for the five chord, I'm sliding in from a half step below. I have B flat and E up to B and F, which is G7 spelled G, B, D, F. Okay, now, uh, I wanted to bring it down a little bit on the verse uh, for the singing, give a little more space. So I'm just going to play the tritones. Right? And let the bass player carry that line. I don't need to play it every time. I'm probably going to play it at the intro of the tune. I'm going to probably play it at the chorus, or as we build up, I'm going to do it there, too. What I can also do when you're when I'm playing with the band, is just not play at all. Let the bass player grab that. I won't do anything. Or I might just go. Right? And just give that space. Now, when I'm doing that stuff like this, one thing that's important, you may have noticed or not, or I'm moving my body. I'm moving my hand especially to keep the time. 
Because I find if I just do those stabs, those hits, I, I'm going to maybe miss it because I'm not falling into the groove right. So if I watch, my hand. By keeping this rhythm almost like a shaker in my head, I'm going to come in and hit the rhythm spot on as opposed to trying to grab it. If there's some sort of representation of the time in my body, I'm moving my body, but I'm really moving this hand because this is the timekeeper. It's like the hi-hat, and it's really going to help me line up the beats much better. I'm going to sit in the groove way more. We're going to encounter this a lot uh, in this course and basically every other course I have ever taught and every guitar player you watch play, you watch Steve Ray Vaughan play, that right hand never stops moving. <laughs>